Hi guys, this is Nathan from Rain Networks, and to, today we're going to talk about uh, one of the products in our product portfolio called Deslock, which is uh, actually a product manufactured by ESET, and uh, it's a product that does a uh, file, uh, disk, email, all kinds of uh, encryption, and a very cool product. And what's really unique about it is it actually gives you a centralized management console for managing all the encryption on your network across your computers. So uh, this is going to be a multi-part video, but in this first video, I wanted to uh, show you know, what the management console looks like, some of the things that you can do with it, and uh, kind of how it works. Because it's very, very unique to have a fully manageable uh, encryption product across your network. So what you're seeing here is the management console. As you can see, it's, uh, it's web-based. Um, pretty easy install less than you know less than 30 minutes I'd say probably about uh, 15 to 20 minutes is the average install time um, we're running this on a 2012 Windows server um, but it'll run in a variety of different uh, flavors of Windows operating system it has a little SQL database back end that ends up driving the system and uh, anyway so you manage it via this web browser as you can see here um, one of the key things that it'll do for you is it will synchronize with your Active Directory. So pretty easy uh, situation here where it'll just do a, a, like an LDAP sync, um, grab all your users if you want. Obviously, that's just a time saver just so you uh, don't have to spend a lot of time getting all your user accounts typed in. Um, over here in the user tree here, you can see that we've got groups uh, set up here, so it's pretty easy to do. There's kind of a drag and drop functionality here and uh, creating teams, as it would call folders, they, they call them teams, um, is, is pretty easy to do. And then you can move the, the users into their corresponding team. So the way that it actually manages the encryption is by using encryption keys and encryption key groups. So if I click on my organization, you'll see that I have these two tabs here for encryption key groups. And you'll see that the uh, couple groups that we made here, we made one for executives, one for sales, and one for support. And so basically what that would mean is that if I added a user to a group, they would then get the encryption keys assigned to that group. So you make the group, you add the users to that group, and then you associate the encryption keys to that group. So let's just open up our sales group here. And you'll see that I have two keys in this group. Okay, and I could add more. But if I go into my encryption key tab here, you'll see the actual encryption keys. So these are the keys that people can use to, for example, encrypt a file, which I will be covering in a future video. But the uh, encryption key groups allows you to kind of think of them like security groups in, uh, in Active Directory, so that you can just add a bunch of people to a group and then they get access to all the encryption keys that are associated to that group. That will make more sense, like I said, when I actually go through some examples of how uh, you actually encrypt files. But uh, just kind of keep that in mind for now that the key logic here is you're going to make groups and you're going to add encryption keys to that groups. Uh, and then you're going to add people to the group. So let me go into uh, look at the people, I'll give you kind of an idea of what it looks like from uh, a actual perspective of the user so here's one of our users right here and if I click on encryption key groups we can see which group he's associated with so again kind of an active directory logic here where you're adding users kind of to like an active directory we would call them a security group so basically that means that this user has the encryption keys in my sales key group available to him to encrypt files other users that are also in the sales key group can now open files that are encrypted by uh, those keys. Again, kind of uh, relating it to Windows, kind of thinking of it like adding permissions to a folder. If this user here, Rob, encrypts a Word document with an encryption key, now Tim, when he goes to open a file encrypted by Rob, if he's in that same key group, he'll be able to open that file but a user who's not in that group would then not be able to open that file. So pretty cool uh, the way that they do that in here with the encryption keys and encryption key group. And this, again, this pertains specifically to, mostly to file and folder level encryption. 
Uh, let's talk a little bit about full disk encryption because that is also managed in here. So uh, as you can see, I can look through the workstations that are assigned to this user, and then I can click this full disk encryption button here, and it'll walk me through a user, uh, or so, sorry, it'll walk me through a wizard, which will send a task to that user's computer to encrypt their hard drive. So this would be for doing a full disk encryption. And again, I can initiate that directly from my management console. With the full disk encryption, there are extra passwords involved, right? So the idea with the full disk encryption is that when the user starts up their computer, they have to type in an additional password to even get to where it will boot into Windows, right? So if I look at this next tab over, this FDE logins, this is the full disk encryption login. So this is where I can manipulate um, this person's password that they're getting upon boot up in the event that let's say they forget it or something like that. Um, so yeah, very important. These two tabs here, workstations and FTE logins, uh, pertain specifically to full disk encryption. Um, the software at the client level that is run, it's a, it's a small package, which I will be covering in a future video, and um, we can actually push that out to the users. So if I click on network workstations, you can see that I can scan my network for the machines. I can then click on a machine and I can say push remote install. And this will obviously send out a task over the network. It'll install uh, in the background for the user. Uh, there is a reboot required at the end, so kind of important to note that. But uh, yeah, so very important that you can, you can push out these installs. Uh, Alternatively, we can do installs manually. So if I click on my organization here and I click on the client install tab, I have the option to go ahead and just download directly the install. And then of course I could save them onto a network drive or whatnot, and, uh, or just you know, go over to the person's computer and install them, et cetera, et cetera. So just some different ways to, to get the uh, client software installed. So that's kind of the basics of the management console. So again, it's web-based, it will, synchronize with your Active Directory. You create your uh, encryption key groups and your encryption keys to assign keys to your users. Um, you have a full disk encryption option. You can do push installs to your network workstations. And uh, that's kind of the big task that you can do uh, within here. Some of the other things it'll do, obviously it'll do email alerts. Uh, there's a feature in here where you can uh, feed it an SMTP server and it'll, uh, it'll do some email alerting for you. So but those are kind of the big features of the management console. Um, come back later, we'll have a, a video on how you encrypt files and folders um, and some of the other kind of client level tasks that we do with the client software. That's what we'll be covering in future videos. Thanks a lot, everybody. Appreciate the time today. And uh, yes, come back soon for more Deslock videos.